What's up guys, Bill here. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I prepare for a day of trading. This is gonna be part one of a three-part series. And in this specific part, I'm going to focus on sentiment analysis and scanning, all right? So let's talk about sentiment analysis first. What I wanna do before each day is just get a feel of the really short-term um, sentiment of the market, right? Are we fully risk on right now? And bullish, are we kind of like, we're bullish, but we're a little bit more cautious and defensive? Or are we bearish and need to be looking actively for shorts and things like that? Obviously, right now we're in the middle of a bull market, but that doesn't mean on every single day you're just always buying calls, always playing breakouts um, and things like this, right? The market can get overextended. It may need short-term pullback, and at that point, you may, may need to be more cautious. The market goes through correction periods um, and all these things that you need to think about every day um, before you start to really select the stocks um, and setups that you're going to play because the environment has a big effect on how uh, reliable your setup is going to be. Okay, So what I like to do is basically just use SPY as my broad market indicator. Um, you can do this with VTI as well. VTI is literally every stock in the market. Um, so some people like to use that. I usually just use SPY. And as we can see here on SPY, uh, we're going to be an inside day for tomorrow. Um, so we got a little bit of uh, consolidation right under all-time highs at 574.71. And we can also see that we're trading above the short-term moving averages. I particularly use the 9 and 20 EMA, but we're above those. So I like to keep it very simple. When price is above the short-term moving averages, to me, that's bullish, right? Now, obviously, you can um, get in situations where price is, like on this day, is a little bit too extended from the 9.00 to be thinking, okay, I'm just going to keep playing breakouts on individual names and we're never going to look back again and price is just going to keep going up, right? We can see price likes to revert back to these EMAs when it gets too far extended to either side, right? So right now we're kind of in tight with them. Uh, we got an inside day. So going into Monday, I'm feeling good about longs. Um, we're not too extended, okay? We're not uh, coming out of some massive type of breakout or breakdown candle to either direction. Uh, so it's it's a good place in the market to kind of be comfortable taking long trades and things like that. Um, what One other thing I like to do is then once I've kind of got my um, analysis of SPY done, I move on to the individual sectors. So there's 11 main sectors of SPY. You've got XLK, which is tech, XLF Finance, XLV Healthcare, XLY Consumer Discretionary, XLC Communication Services, XLI Industrials, XLP Staples or Defensive Names, XLE Energy, XLU Utilities, XLB Materials, and finally XLRE Real Estate. And what I'm looking for is any type of relative strength or weakness in these different uh, sectors uh, to help me decide what stocks to trade, right? I'd like to be taking stocks that are in strong sectors currently, avoiding weakness. Um, I'd also like to be avoiding sectors that maybe are running too hot and overextended, right? That you might not notice simply by just looking at SPY alone, okay? So some examples, um, relative weakness right now, uh, healthcare, okay? As we can see, we're trading below the short-term moving averages, and the nine is actually crossed back below the 20. And Friday, we rejected a retest of these on volume, okay? So that shows to me relative weakness. Now, we do have this major pivot here that price needs to come and retest, and maybe that's just gonna hold and it's just a short-term uh, bearish situation for XLV, the healthcare sector, but right now, you know, I wouldn't really be looking to play healthcare names long, especially on breakouts. Maybe once this level is retested and it proves that it can hold, then you start to look for you know, nice cheap deals on some healthcare names. But right now this is weak, just, you know, compared to SPY, right? SPY that's trading at all time highs up above its short term moving averages versus healthcare, which trading below the short term moving averages a little bit farther from its all time highs. Um, and then you can find 
you know, different sectors that are, are just looking really strong and great, like utilities, which is getting really tight here, right under all time highs that had a nice green day up 1% on Friday, even though SPY was trading lower by a little bit and had a red day and closed near its lows. Utilities holding the short-term moving averages. Look at the respect of that nine. Recently, a gap up unfilled. That's bullish. And price getting tight here with that moving average respect right under all-time highs on a green day for a weekday in SPY, okay? Relative strength. Now, there's also times when things are going to get too hot and you're going to realize that maybe you should you know, take profit if you're already in that sector or just avoid trying to play to get in a little late and chase and then risk eating a pullback. And materials are a great example of that, right? It's been strong recently, big move up, unfilled gap, but look at the extension from the 9 EMA and making new all-time highs Friday, but then kind of putting in a big wick up top and closing red. Um, not exactly what you want to see for continuation to be super, you know, uh, high conviction on continuation from this sector going into the beginning of next week. Um, does have this big pivot. It probably needs to retest. Would like to see the EMAs catch up. So this is how I look through the charts for sentiment analysis using SPY, the major indexes and the sectors contained within SPY. Another way I do it is through Finviz using the sector uh, group um, bar charts. OK, this is a great way to just really quickly get um an understanding of what's hot, what's not, right? We can see here that one week performance, basic materials, right? Crushing it, right? Leading all the sectors. But if you just use this, then what you might miss is what we just covered on the chart that it, it now it's a little extended, right? It's probably not the best risk to reward to start loading, um, names from this sector come early next week. Uh, but it's great to really get an idea of what the leaders are, what the um, what the laggards are, and maybe start to see if there's going to be some rotation, right? Maybe some rotation out of materials and healthcare is the laggard, but healthcare is coming into some potential support. So maybe you start to watch some of those names a little bit for the next couple of days, see if XLV can hold that level and bounce. There might be some rotation into these lagging names, okay? Um, now, let's talk about um, the, the scanning side of this, right? So there's type two types of scans for me. The manual scanning, which is literally just going through my watch list and looking at the charts to try to find what I want to trade next. And then there's automated scans, um, which is where you're kind of running a computer program with a bunch of parameters and it pulls up a ton of names um, based on whatever those parameters you input are. We'll start with manual scans, okay? This is something I do every day, um, looking for new setups for the day. And I'm always adding names to the watch list, taking names off. It's a constant thing you got to do to stay prepared on a day to day basis. And when I'm going through my watch lists, obviously we're in a bull market. Like I said, I'm looking for, you know, 95% of the time to trade to the upside in a bull market. I'm not going to fight the trend. I, I'm a trend following trader that likes to take entries on stuff that has strength, but is starting to consolidate, letting these moving averages catch up and give low risk entries for continuation to the upside. So some examples um, of things like that. PCG, huge move up, great volume on these big days. And now it's starting to tighten up in this volume uh, volatility contraction pattern or flag or pennant, however you want to say it. It's an inside day coming into the week and look at how low the volume's getting. The volume dries up um, and the range tightens. That's usually, a, and you're by the moving averages, that's usually a great place to take an entry. And if you guys have seen my power, uh, power earnings gap flags video, it's a very similar idea to this. This move just didn't happen to be on earnings, but it's nice, strong moves on volume. And then eventually the range tightens, the moving averages catch up, the volume dries up, and you have yourself a nice entry point to risk off of, all right? Palantir, another good example of that. Recent big gap up thanks to the uh, S&P inclusion news, 14% day on volume, kept running. But now the EMAs are catching up. At least the nine is. There's a little bit of a wide gap here. So you'd want to probably 
have a, a, a tight risk on a setup like this where you want it to see a hold the nine in this big gex level. But look, uh, the range tightening up, catching up to the nine, getting in this little bit of a flag here as volume decreases. Friday was its lowest volume day since the inclusion news and the gap up. Um, another thing I look for is stocks that have um, broken through a major pivot and are now, now, now coming back to retest that pivot. Uber's an example. This was a huge pivot level, right? Uh, we set back in July, came up here, consolidated, looking like, oh, maybe he wants to break through. No, fades down again. But now we've not only broke through it, we gapped over it. And that's usually a good sign. And we're coming back down to retest it now and look at how low that volume was on Friday. Okay, so this could be something. I'm actually already in this trade. I got in on this first initial retest on Thursday, um, but we'll see how it responds on Friday. And this is looking like it has a good chance of retesting here, holding and heading higher. Um, but that's what I want to see, right? Um, similar to the flags, just a different way of playing the flat top, they call it sometimes, or, or range breakout. Uh, big pivot breakout, okay? Um, let's talk about some automated scans, okay? The scans I like to run um, first uh, are inside day scans. I love inside day setups. There's a lot of different ways you can scan these. I use Trady Ticks, uh, Scanny for that. And we, I've talked about this a lot before, so I don't want to spend a ton of time on it, but I just come over here scan for inside days. I like to use my watch list so I'm not getting 1,000 stock results. And then because we're in a bull market again, I want the strongest names of these names. Uh, there's a relative strength filter here. So I'm going to sort by relative strength. So you see things like place, VST, Tesla. Um, and you'll, you know, pull up, pull up these charts. What do they look like? Um, all right, place. Wow. I'm already in comments for this trade. Um, so I know the, about this chart really well, but if you had never seen it before and you're just seeing it because of the inside day, you'd say, holy crap, look at this move. Um, and now starting to tighten up inside day, the nine's not quite up there yet. I'd prefer the nine to be a little tighter into price, but the volume's non-existent after all this major volume, right? So maybe a decent, you know, setup to trade. Um, come Monday for a day trade. VST, again, there's a little bit too much extension for me from the nine. Um, and you have this major level back here. But what I'd be looking for on VST is actually a little bit more of a pullback. Let this nine catch up, maybe get closer to this pivot level. Volume continue to dry up. And that would be a better trade for me, um, especially if I was going to swing it. Just for a day trade, I can live with some extension. For instance, Tesla was on that list. Tesla's a little extended, but not mat as much as VST. I can live with this a little bit more for a day trade, especially on a very liquid name that gets a lot of flow and has momentum. Um, and the, you know, the options contracts aren't super spready. I can live with something like this. All right. Um, you also, I also like to scan for inside weeks, but that's obviously something that you would just do once a week. I do it on Sundays. Today is a Sunday. Uh, so I scan for inside weeks, same idea, sorting by relative strength. And there's a lot of good ones this week, guys. Hood, Oracle, um, NEE, Carvana. Uh, let's pull up my inside week watch list and I'll show you kind of what I'm looking at here. Uh, same thing. It's not going to be um, foreign looking, right? I mean, I try to trade a certain type of setup and certain type of system, especially for swings. This is a peg flag, right? The nine's catching up, the volume's drying up, and now we've got an inside week because of all the consolidation. That's a great look. NEE, -E, very similar, right? Um, amazing, strong leader of a stock in a hot sector um, and theme with energy, utilities, and, um, and, and you know, AI tie-ins here. These AI data centers are going to need a lot of new energy to be running um, you know, to continue running and growing. Uh, it's a big theme right now, right? So we have a lot of respect to these EMAs. They're catching up again. Price is tightening up in this flag. Um, and it looks like it could be ready to go again. Uh, EOSE, another energy name. 
again, big time volume breakouts, 26%, 20, uh, yeah, twice, 26% just in a couple of weeks. Um, on big volume, volatility contraction pattern here, flag, pennant, whatever you want to say, uh, with the 9 in 20 tight and right under price, um, looking like it wants to maybe head higher. Zillow, another one, nice volume, getting tighter, decreasing volume as the 9 catches up. This is a pretty big separation on the EMAs is the one thing to keep in mind, but this is a rate sensitive sector. Um, and we do have the rate cuts and everything. So that kind of theme is there. Carvana, another one. Nice volume on the move up. Decreasing volume on the pullback to the EMAs. And Hood, um, this one's, a, I would say, my least favorite of this group, just because Friday was the big breakout candle, right? So ideally, we get a couple days of range like this. Like, this is where you'd want to get in. Um, and then you get the big break. But it is an inside week nonetheless. I would just be more patient with this one. I want to see a pullback. I don't want to buy this extended from the nine. OK. Um, now, uh, some more animated scans. One I like to run via Finviz is the what I call a continuation scanner, which is essentially looking for stocks that put in big moves on high relative volume. So at least four percent on over one and a half of their relative volume and you get a bunch of names. And what I do is I, I run this every day um, and then I add these names if I haven't already been tracking them to my watch list that we just went through. And the cool thing about Finviz is you can just hover over the ticker and get like a view of the chart. And what I'm looking for is stocks that broke out above a major level, right? Um, SATS is a great example. Uh, it, it's been on my radar for a while. It broke out of this bull flag. Let's pull up SATS. Um, that should be in my lungs. This broke out a while ago. It got on my radar, and I'm going to show you guys. So look here, 21% um, on massive volume. So that pulls up in that scanner that day. And what I notice is, oh, look, it broke over this major resistance. OK, so I put it on my watch list, and then I bet you can guess what I'm looking for, right? A lowing, a decreasing volume pullback towards this level and the moving averages catch up. Boom. This day right here. You even get a little hammer, right? That's a perfect entry. You catch all this. Then it break. Now it gaps over another big resistance. You just have to look left a little more. Look at that pivot gaps over it starts to flag. Nine catches up. We're retesting the pivot. Look at this inside day. Look at the volume, the lowest it's been ever since the move up. What happens the next day? Almost a 10% day and even more, but it, you know, ended up getting a little too hot and selling back off. But that's what you want to get, guys. You want to track these big moving stocks on volume, then let them consolidate, let them pull back. Look for places where it's a big pivot and the moving averages start to have confluence. Get your entry, get right, sit tight catch this move, right? If you didn't miss catch this one, you could have caught this one. Wait for the EMAs to catch up. Let the consolidation happen. Make sure it's on decreasing volume. Get your entry on an inside day is an amazing time to take this a stab at this, right? Boom. Okay. So that's what I'm looking for on these um, automated scans, uh, stuff that's breaking out of major levels. Obviously, a lot of these results are going to be the China names, which are super hot right now. GLNG. All right. That looks like it just busted over a uh, pivot. Yes. Here we go. See? Little gap up. Big push. Big volume over this pivot. So what am I going to do um, with this name? I'm going to add it to my watch list. I'm going to set an alert for this level, and I'm going to see if it can spend a few days trading sideways on decreasing volume back to this level with these EMAs catching up and then potentially take an entry for a swing there. OK, um, so that is how I do my scanning uh, for sentiment analysis and for looking for individual stocks to trade for the coming days or weeks, both for swings and intraday day trades. Um, in part two of this video, I'm going to talk about uh, taking some of these uh, names that I like and updating the charts and how and how I chart them and get ready to take trades on them. 
And, and then in part three, I'm going to talk about my trade planning, like how I execute trades and how I build in risk management to those trades and to my overall account, um, uh, you know, going on a day to day and week to week basis. So hopefully that helps guys. Hopefully it's interesting. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I talked about in today's video, just leave a comment or find me on Twitter, X, whatever, and send me a message and I'll help you out.